Welcome back to the IU427 garage, everybody. Today, we're gonna do a Tech Tip Tuesday. All right, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but uh, we used to do two videos a week. We used to do one on Tuesday and one on either Friday or Saturday. Uh, lately, they've been coming on Fridays. And um, the reason that you're not seeing the Tuesday updates is because it takes a lot of time to put videos together. And that takes away from the time I'm working on customer cars. So when I can film, if I can film, I try to include as much of the updates for all of you that I can. But the bottom line is that most of the stuff is for the videos anyway are for the customers and so I want to make sure that I keep them updated on what's going on and what's happening with their cars so I've been doing the Tuesday updates just because I haven't had the time to edit and do all the stuff that goes along with them but I thought maybe I could share if maybe not if every week maybe every other week we'll see how it goes I could offer some of my tool and tech advice for you guys or tips and so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you about the locking feature that you have on your drill, your cordless drill, that you probably don't even know exists. Okay, I've got three drills on the bench, and I have other drills that are on the work van that I could pull out of there um, because the work van is here at the shop today. Um, but the three that I have are going to give you everything you need to know on, on whether your drill has this, has this feature or not. I may pull out the, the, uh, the older... Uh, Hitachi drill that I have here that has a keyless chuck on it but it doesn't have this feature so it really doesn't have anything to do with uh, what I'm going to tell you today so so let me get the camera turned around and I'll show you what this feature is and what it does okay so here's the poop everybody knows how to use these keyless chucks I mean basically this is one of my older drills so is the Makita here the, I think the Makita is probably older than all of the drills that I have here other than the, the Hitachi that I'm going to pull out in just a second so basically if if the drill is in the forward position you go ahead to tighten down the chuck and you do this right and if you hold it you'll hear it ratchet you can audibly hear it ratchet now I'll, I'll hold it it's in gear and you'll hear it. click click now everybody thinks okay it's locked in it's not gonna it's not gonna twist it's not gonna it's come undone it's gonna stay exactly where it is but that's where you're wrong on most of these style drills with a ratcheting chuck if you take the chuck and you pull it just one click back, you can hear this audible click. Hear it? So when you click it back, just that one tooth, just until you hear that click, now the chuck is locked. Now it will not unscrew. So if you're drilling, let's say you're drilling into masonry or you're drilling into metal or whatever, and you've, you've had that drill bit come loose to where it starts spinning on the bit when the, when the bit gets resistance, that won't happen with this, okay? So that's the, the Milwaukee here, right? We'll do the same thing. This is a newer Milwaukee. This is the brushless. And the only reason I bought this one, I love this drill. This is the one I use most of the time for drilling all of the, the holes for the rivets on these cars. I use this Milwaukee. It's just a 3 8 12 volt. The batteries last forever, and uh, it has a nice, uh, strong, uh, drill to you know drill to it. It doesn't lock up all that often. I can usually power through most things, but I found that I was always having to go to one of my bigger drills when I needed a bit that had uh, that didn't have a reduced shank. And so I ended up buying the uh, the half inch 12 volt. It has a different style battery. This is the Kai capacity battery, but and, and it's brushless. But it's basically the same drill. I mean, you look at the two and they're nearly identical. So, same thing with this one. You tighten it up and you'll hear the ratcheting. So you hear the ratchet. And then, just one click back. You can hear that click. Now it's locked. This is my old 18 volt Makita. I've had this, actually, this is the second one I've had. The first one actually had the hammer feature of it, but I found I didn't use the hammer feature out in the field on construction sites because I have a, a, a Bosch, a Bulldog, for hammer drilling that's corded, that just, 
it kicks ass. But this is my go-to when I'm drilling out in the field. And it's the same thing. If you tighten this up, let me loosen it. If you tighten it up and you ratchet it, so click, 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 and then one click back, you can hear that audible click. So when it's in that locked position, the bit has a greater chance of staying locked in there. This is a Hitachi, which is now Metabo, and I have my countersink bit in it. That's what I generally keep this drill set up for. 12 volt battery, same thing. I think these are nickel, nickel metal hydride or something like that. Yeah, nickel metal hydride. Um, again, because they just last longer than the, the standard uh, nickel cadmium batteries. And same thing with this chuck. It, 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 just, it, it just does a regular chuck. Like with an old chuck key, the only difference is is you don't need a, a chuck key to tighten it. So, you know, it's a toolless chuck, but it doesn't lock. And so, inevitably, if I try to drill with a drill bit in this thing, it always spins. That's why I just use it for countersinking now. So, that'll give you your little tech tip for this week. If you have one of these ratcheting style chucks on the end of your drill, remember... That feature is there to lock the actual drill chuck in position. And once it's locked in, if you've made it good and tight, that drill bit ain't going to come out. Alright, so I'm hoping that that little tip will help all you guys out there building your factory fives and your hot rods and whatever. Remember that there's this feature. And, you know, when I, I remember back... Nobody reads owner's manuals anymore, right? Because you can't you can't read the owner's manual without going online. They don't just send out that little booklet with the tools a lot of times anymore. And so if you want the owner's manual, you got to go online and find out what's in it. Well, I recently saw a, another video on a tool review um, channel that I watch, and it was brought up about this locking feature. It was in my original manual for the 18-volt Makita years ago when I bought it. And I used it. But over time, you forget about these things, and they just become second nature to you. And you forget that a lot of people may not know about this feature. So if I can share that with you, I'm more than happy to spread my knowledge on this stuff. There, are, Like I said, there are other channels that talk about this kind of stuff. So if you don't believe me, go out and look. Um, one guy even went out, uh, went so far as to call the tool manufacturers and ask them about that feature to find out if indeed it was true or it was just some type of witchcraft and, you know, uh, urban legend. So if you're enjoying the content that we do here and you look forward to the next tool tip Tuesday that we do, go ahead, do the like, the share, the subscribe, share this with your friends. Um, there may be many of your friends that are building cars, not necessarily factory fives or hot rods. Maybe they're just weekend mechanics and they don't know about this. So share it with them. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.